Now I recognize Dr. Barra from California for five minutes of questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first off, Dr. Gary, Dr. Anderson, thank you for being here. You know, physician, um, faculty member at UC Davis, was an associate dean there, and I appreciate um, you didn't sign up for this, but I appreciate that, that, that you're here. And you know, for all the scientists, doctors, and, and others that work through this pandemic, you know, some of the, the abuse challenges that they've had to face, um, again, I apologize for, for that. Um, you know, as someone who has spent most of my time in Congress thinking about pandemic preparedness and global health security on national commissions, um, putting recommendations in, in place, traveling to Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone post um, the Ebola epidemic to try, to try to get there. I understand how important this work is. I'm gonna limit my comments to um, the topic today, which is proximal origin. You know, if I go back to you know, January of 2020, when we first started talking about it, this, Congress had its first briefing, um, I think in the third week of, of, of January in the CVC auditorium. At that point, I raised, and again, Dr. Fauci was one of the briefers, the importance of getting to the hot zone, getting our scientists, the best in the world, to, to, to Wuhan and, and, and to the hot zone to understand proximal origins. Um, obviously, that, that did not happen. So, um, you know, there was appropriate criticism of how the Chinese were handling the early days of, of that pan pandemic. The scientific community did the best that they could um, to try to understand the, the origins. And, you know, um, yeah, I appreciate the, the work that was published in, in, in your paper. I appreciate the openness to thinking about, you know, whether origins were from a lab leak versus, um, you know, a wet market. And we continue to explore that. Um, to my colleague, Dr. Miller Meeks, test, I agree with a, a lot of. Um, what she said, it is important for us to understand that and continue to try to gather information to understand it. But in, given that we may never reach a conclusion, I also want to, to, to be forward-looking. Um, I think it's appropriate for this committee, um, because it is the vehicle we have as, as Congress, to look at lab security and lab safety and, and you know, to, to think about recommendations working with the scientific community, because, you know, it, this type of research is going to continue, um, and it's important for us to understand and prepare, not just for um, future pandemics, because we will see those pandemics in the future, but it also, you know, there are bio threats around the world, there are bad actors around the world, and we have to be doing that research so we have appropriate countermeasures and, and, and the like. Um, in addition, though, we shouldn't discount the, um, the, 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 the theory that this emerged from a wet market, because we should also explore and work with the international community to prevent that type of leap from animals to, to humans, because we also know zoonotic um, transmission of viruses um, is, is bound to happen and is the origin of many new novel pandemics. Um, would both of you agree that we should you know, be thinking about both of these, Dr. Anderson? Yeah, I agree. I think it's important that, you know, there are several different objectives here. One is the scientific question of the origin, but of course, given what we have learned about coronaviruses, including the one causing the pandemic, but also all the related ones that have since been discovered, I do think we need to reconsider our lab safety practices around these viruses specifically. And that's because of what we have learned during the pandemic. And that's an important discussion, too, that I totally agree with. Dr. Gary. Well, we certainly, as virologists, take lab safety very seriously. Uh, in the very lives of my students and myself and others working around the laboratory uh, depends on taking those issues very seriously. And there are very good guidelines in place. I, I agree with Dr. Anderson that we need to rethink some of those, given you know the potential threat of of wild coronaviruses coming over. We should probably do those all those studies at biosafety level three. Uh, instead of lower bi biosafety levels. But those are logical things that the scientific community will put in place. Great. And again, I, I think that's where Congress should work with the science community and take guidance from the science community as opposed to non-scientists in Congress dictating um, what might happen and, and what lab safety should look like. I also, just in the few minutes that I have, I would hate for this committee or Congress to conclude that we shouldn't be collaborating with the international community, having labs around the world, because if we want to prevent pandemics, we have to go 
out there where the pandemics are originating and work with those scientists around the world. And it would be a dangerous conclusion for this committee to say we shouldn't be working with labs around the world. We absolutely have to work with those labs. Thank you, and I'm out of time. <laughs>